Hello and welcome to Trading Day. The negotiations continue today with all the clubs. We have one week to go with the trade period. Two players found a new home. And I'll get the opinions of the 300 gamers sitting next to me, Brad Johnson and Nick Del Sando, shortly. But let's go to our news hand, John Ralph. Massive day, John. Hello, guys. We've made three trades. We've brought in the, the blue <laughs> bla blazer brigade. I absolutely <laughs> love it. So it be interesting to see what you guys have got. You might have to lift. The other guys have been on their form today. Hey, there has been one significant trade. So Jeremy Finlayson, he's now a Port Adelaide player. Player, uh, one that uh, Port Adelaide has acquired for, let's face it, next to nothing, a future third rounder. Now, I've spoken to Chris Davies, the Port Adelaide football boss. He says that they love his versatility. He loves the fact that they, he was able to kick 44 goals in a grand final year. And, and certainly he's keen to put up his hand to play second ruck. Now, at the very least, he puts pressure on Charlie Dixon and Georgie Artis and also Todd Marshall. 23-9 from 13 games this year. But let's face it. Does he get this club closer to a premiership? What are your thoughts? I don't think he puts pressure on the guys you mentioned. I think he sits fourth in the in the rung in terms of that. His manager even said today that he's probably not in their best 22. He's got a lot to prove to go there. They they get a player who's already started training. He's committed. So it's up to Jeremy Finlayson on, on what effect he has for, for Port Adelaide. But he does sit behind those other three talls for me. The other bit that you're taking into consideration, a, a future third rounder. So they haven't given up a great deal for him. They won't be paying him a great deal. So there's nothing wrong with bringing that guy into your football club. As a backup, John O, or is that fourth tall if you ever need it? We've seen him play some really good games of football, but the reality is he's also inconsistent. So you have to take that risk on when you take on Jeremy Finlayson. But I think it's an OK decision, but we need to see how they it play, actually plays Port Adelaide play fast. He likes fast footy. Yep. So mm. that's what may be the benefit for a Finlayson. That's what I would have said with the Giants. The, mm. the, the speed of ball movement, he's going to fit exactly where he's going to... Uh, it, yeah, everything's got to be about playing fast for playing finals footy. Can he stand mm. up in finals? And I reckon you guys have got some question marks. Now, I can tell you now that the Finlayson trade now means that Peter Adams is much more likely to leave. Now, I understand Sydney is his preferred home, so Port would want a fair bit for him. But if that Jordan Dawson deal gets done, well, Sydney will have a couple of high picks. And certainly then, I think it's likely that Adams finds his way to Sydney. Well, with Laddams finds his way to Sydney, I think that's a that's a pretty good deal because you've just discussed obviously Finlayson, mm. like that's for nothing. So how do you see that? Well, that's right. If if Laddams is there, Finlayson drops it probably down another peg as as well. So that sort of deal has to come forward now, and it probably works for the Sydney Swans if they can get it. The him. writing's on the wall for Laddams. Mm. I mean, there's mm. your answer about where you sit in the pecking order of that football club being Port Adelaide. We know what the Swans did last week, bring, uh, last year, bringing in Tom Hickey and how good he's been. So if you get Hickey and Laddams. It's not a bad little combo you got. There's the two ruck combination. And we all think that, look, they need to bring in a senior midfielder. They're really bullish about the, the capacity for Dersma and Butters and Rosie to mm. play as centre square mm. midfielders. Yep. They want to give them their head next year. They want something, Port Adelaide, let's be honest. They get to the finals and, and they're looking for that extra leg up. They had a pretty healthy list throughout the year. And, and as you mentioned, I just, you know, I'm intrigued to where he slots in. Yeah, look, it was more performance based that. that a game against the Bulldogs where they had players that were very good the week before just, just didn't play well in the, the biggest game of the year for the footy club. So I think Ken English sits there and goes, OK, we can work on that. We've got to get that right from an individual point of view. Collectively as a team, they're in a pretty good spot. The elephant in the room, does Kenny Hinkley have to eyeball him and say, I need you to be a more physical player under the way we play? I think so. And I think he already has eyeballed yeah. them. <laughs> he that, should have a, eyeballed them. If that's the starting... eyeball, it's going to scare you. It's Ken Hinkley. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Finn Lason, though. Yeah, that's a starting point for all yep. players. If you're not competitive, you're going to be inconsistent, and that's what Finn Lason has been at his time at the Giants. Well, let's talk about Luke Dunstan. Uh, he came out publicly and said, uh, I don't think Brett Ratton mm -hmm. rated me. Well, obviously, guess who rates him? Simon yeah. Goodwin. That's right. A third income drive-by. It was fantastic. We love seeing that. <laughs> now we fly. And maybe he knew that he was already going to the Melbourne Football Club because that's where he's landed as a delisted free agent this afternoon. A really busy afternoon for Melbourne. Now, only the last couple of minutes, a four-club trade has just dropped. It is a pick swap, but it is significant. So they have secured the, demon, the Dogs' uh, pick 17. Uh, they've handed over their own future first-rounder. Now, the Dogs now have the points for Sam Darcy, their yep. father-son. They have picks 23, 44 and 34. Melbourne has picks 17, 37 and 47. They keep trading out their first round and then they get, get it back in as well. So now Adelaide cannot get that pick 17 from Sydney. So they can't give it up for Jordan Dawson. So that Sydney-Adelaide uh, deal for Jordan Dawson, it looks really, really hard to get done. Adelaide's first pick is four and then 33. 33 is not going to get it done for Jordan Dawson. But what do you think about Dunstan's chances of playing senior football at Melbourne? I can't see it at all. So it's a two-year deal. I can't see it all being equal, how he breaks into that midfield. We know a couple of guys moved on, Nathan Jones and Vandenberg. So mm. he's a replacement for the replacements. Now, mm. I think in his heart of hearts, and all players are like this, I can break in. Back me in, coach, I'll be able to do it for you. 
but I, I just can't see it happening. He gets the security of the two years, but the only way Luke Dunstan plays, in my mind, if something has gone significantly wrong well, in the midfield well, of the Ds. You get, you get the mindset approach, that's great, and you want that as your coach, but you've got, you've got Viney, Petrarca, Oliver and Harms yeah. sitting, sitting in front of him. So he's going to have to rely on a bit of injury, or he does something magical at half forward on a wing, which we haven't seen before. They've already got really which good players in those areas, exactly. clearly, and you've got young guys coming through that will demand more midfield time. The question is, has he played that role before? Well, he's played it for the three years at St Kilda. Let's be honest, he's been not their number one go-to in terms of their midfield. So he comes into Melbourne's... I think a good system helps players. So I think he will help Melbourne definitely in terms of depth. I, I look at Mark Williams and he said, I fixed Ed Langdon, I fixed Clayton <laughs> Oliver. This is my greatest project in Luke Dunstan. Not who, bad. who can be an OK kick, but yeah. he dumb kicks it. So all of a sudden, he gets into a great system. We get to see what he wants to do. I look at this trade period, guys, as the... Well, it was the trade period that basically hands... Melbourne back-to-back -back premierships. None of their rivals in the last in the top ten have effectively got better. So last year, Geelong, we bring in Jeremy Cameron. Port Adelaide, they bring in Aaliyah Aaliyah. They bring in Orazio Fantasia. This year, Geelong, very little. Brisbane, stuff all. St Kilda, nothing. Sydney lose Dawson. Freo lose Chera. JWS lose Mumford and Finlayson. The Dogs lose four fringe players. Might get a fringe Ruckman in. Um, would Melbourne be just sitting back and going, this is fantastic, just smoking the cherry? How good is oh. this? Why don't you stick your neck out, Ralphie? Uh, you've gone back to back. I went for a three people Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> I got two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're setting it up now for a dynasty. Like, let's be honest. Well, not only that, but their age demographic, the amount of football that they've played together, they are set up for the next couple of years, no matter who comes. But it's a very good point, Ralphie. Because those teams need to make up the difference. So the Dogs lose by roughly 70-odd points now. It was a blowout in the end. But those teams need to make up that, that gap, percentage-wise. Mm. And that's assuming that the Ds don't get any better from what they were this yeah. year already. So it is significant. You can't see any of those teams pushing up through personnel. So therefore, it has to be a game-style change. And look, yeah, it's be interesting in another seven days' time, Ralphie, to just assess, you know, what you've just said then to to where yeah, it will be at that, at that point. And yep. I understand it's early, and it's and it's exactly the way that it is at the moment. Back to back year, they're in a sweet spot. They've got every opportunity. Everyone said that about the Bulldogs in 2016. They're wow, they're a young team. Look at where they'll go. Took them years to get going again. So it's been really interesting from a Melbourne point of view for that perspective. But they're in a great spot to have another crack at it. And they're in that spot because they set themselves up years ago. They, they invested in the draft. They got hammered for it. And they're actually getting the fruits of it now. So a back-to-back-to-back-to-back, to back to back to back, Ralphie. <laughs> uh, next time you go with it, don't be a letterbox and sit on the fence here on this show, trading show. Um, Eddie Betts finds a new home. Yes, and uh, not at the Carlton Football Club as a development coach, but he's gone down to Geelong, which is just fantastic for them. We're in multiple fronts there. So a part-time coaching and leadership role. He says, I'm going to teach the small forwards. Hasn't Eddie got some tricks to try and impart to those mm. guys? So if you're Geelong and you're battling Essendon for Tyson Stengel, the SANFL star, surely Betts, them gives, Betts gives them the whip hand. So... Um, it was just an OK player with significant issues off the field, Stengel. But this year, 44-26 in 19 games, including an SANFL Premiership. Three hauls of uh, three goals in the finals. Now, he's an unrestricted free agent. Essendon missed out on Gold Coast forward Malcolm Roses. They've lost Irving Mosquito, so very keen to have a crack at him as well. Have you seen enough of Stengel to believe that he can make it? And more to the point, after, let's face it, about three chances, does he deserve another one, a fourth chance? Well, he's going to get the fourth chance. So it's up, it's up to him now, 22 years of age, whether he's just got that maturity now within himself that he's learned from the, the mistakes and can move past it. Maybe Eddie allows that to happen in, in some way if it does happen down at Geelong. If he does get to Geelong, he probably steps straight in front of Myers, Dalhouse, close... Atkins in some ways because he, he has got that X factor. He's got a bit of flair about him, more flair than what some of these other guys have on their list at the moment. And the difference with Stengel compared to those guys coming out of the under-18 system, he actually has some evidence behind him. Mm. So is the question, can he mm. play at this level? Yeah, he can because we've seen it in glimpses over the last few years when he was at Adelaide. So I do know he can play at the level. The challenge for him is, as you touched on, is the discipline that this game demands on field, but particularly off field. Can he fit into that system? If there's any system that can provide that, you would think it is the Cats with their culture. Well, that's right. And most clubs think that they can fix anyone. So uh, <laughs> if you've got a three strike, you, you, you're probably on your last legs. But to get another opportunity, this might be the turning point. Um, as we look at it now, Ralphie, um, we just touched on uh, Geelong. Mm. And I want to lean to you, Jono, in terms of their premiership window, right? We, we all think mm. they're on a cliff and, and they're halfway down. What do they need to do to win a flag? Well, they'll still be sitting there going, OK, 12, in 12 months' time, we could still be holding the Premiership Cup up. And they, they've got to think that way because of the star factor. You go, OK, where does the value add come from? You look at the reigning Premiers in the Melbourne Footy Club and they've got their stars, but they, the value add they got this year from, from Bailey Fritz, who was up 48%, Kasai Pickett, Trent Rivers, Salem, Tom McDonald and Spargo. But then you add into that as well, I think, Neil Bullen, Bowie and Petty 
who had a, had great seasons within themselves, especially uh, Bowie towards the the back end and, and wins a wins a premiership medal. So from that you go, okay, where they drafted these guys? They drafted Fritz at 31, Pickett at 12, Rivers at 32, McDonald 53, Salem at nine, top end, and Spargo at 29. So they've been able to value add through the draft, but these guys this year in particular when they won the flag have been sensational. So then you go to the Cats and you go, OK, where does their value add come mm. from? Because they're not going to be able to trade in this year like they have in the past where they've got Danger or Cameron or Isaac Smith and, and Higgins. So you go to what's on the list at the moment and you go through them and we just haven't we just haven't seen them, unfortunately. We've seen a little bit of, of Holmes. Parfit we've seen a little bit of, and Narkel as well. And can those guys, or can three or four on this particular list here, actually stand up next year and have a season that adds the value required to get them into a, get them into a grand final, get them to win finals, for, for example? Because Clark's contract is probably going to go. Can Simpson... Sammy Simpson do it. Yep. Can Zach Guthrie stand up? He's played enough footy now. Can he have a, an unbelievable year? Similar to what a Petty did for, for Melbourne. That's where the Cats internally have to try and add value for what they've already got on their list. I like, a lot of, I like a lot of those young guys. I don't know if they will be the difference in 12 months' time. These guys need it. And you're talking about winning premierships. This is not yeah. about playing finals. They can do that year in, year out. This has actually been the difference from where they have been for the last five years, actually taking that next step to win the whole thing, Jono. I don't know if it's in that group right there. That's why I think it has to be a style change. Mm. The, the players that they've currently got are brilliant players, and I acknowledge everything that they have been, but the system and the style hasn't worked to this point to win the whole thing. I think the game style has to change. But so, Chris Scott has to give, give them the chance. So will that group, any of those particular players, and I'm saying there's a lot of good players there, yep. are they going to be the difference from where they sit right now to win the whole no, thing? No, of, of, of that group, you've got Parfit, Narkel, Radagalia, and then I, that's why I added in Simpson, Guthrie, yep. possibly Clark if they can't get the deal done. Yep. They're the five or six of the real value add that could assist the stars that they've got in there. Some of the others, yes, haven't played footy and haven't played much footy over the, over the last 12 months, but might get 10 or 12 games in that you go, OK, Geelong are now... And got that's, some good and that's also talent. assuming that the players that have been brilliant and A graders for a long time Back still, up again. are still at that level. <laughs> yep, exactly. Still at that level. You guys are all magnificent kicks. Can Patrick Dangerfield improve his kicking at 32? He has to. No. There's, there's no question. I no. think he personally I think <laughs> well, he, no. I think he can. If he if he really wants to, if Danger really wants to and focus that specific skill over the summer, no question. There is none whatsoever in my mind that he can fix some of the um, skill execution in his game. No. I think, I think it's you a can, flat no. I, can, I think you can pick better decisions. You can become a better kick by the decision that you choose and swim between the flags. Take what the easiest option is for you, for any particular player. This is danger, but it could be anybody. If he picks better options going forward, Jono, he will be a better kick. I haven't seen an improvement in his kick in the last five years. That's the point, though. It's no, up to this danger. Is the point. So he's a professional yeah. athlete getting played. The maximum amount of money down at Geelong to be the best player he can be, to take them to the next level and win a premiership. And if that marginal gain you're talking about, Jono, uh, is still lingering, then I'm sorry to say he's not going to... But even if it's a 5 or stage. 10% increase in effectiveness, that is big in his game because his game's already here. So we're not talking about a 20% increase. You're talking about an incremental increase in their best player. Goal kicking would be a significant one. Well, it, it would be. It's a, it's a component of, of all yeah. of it, I think. Mm. But if he commits to that... And, and Scotty and the coaches that they get commit to him from that point of view and just, he's a star, leave him alone, like let him do his own yeah. thing. No, no, no. This is the difference between maybe winning it next year, if he can get that right. Dicko, no one's got better Hawthorne male than you. So <laughs> John Segler is someone who Geelong are interested in and also the Western Bulldogs. Are you certain that he will be traded? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, he's certainly not going to be at Hawthorne next year. So I think the, the leader in this stage would be the Western Bulldogs. Obviously Geelong are desperate for uh, a ruckman. But you can just see with Jonathan Segler, he's got some football left in him. Hawthorne are not where he needs. We've got uh, Reeves and we've got big boy McAvoy. So... He's finding a new home, so it's whether it's the Western Bulldogs. Who do you or think John. he should choose out of those two options? Western Bulldogs, dogs, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And that's so, big for the dogs. If they if they're able to secure Segler and O'Brien as a well, as a double act mm. in terms of what they could do positionally for the Bulldogs, that then starts to yep. challenge what you're talking yep. about earlier with the Melbourne Footy Club going back to well, back. Well, this, this is the time to get the Hawks because I think Sam Mitchell coming in and Alistair Clarkson's not there anymore, it's time to change. So I think Sam's coming in with a fresh set of eyes and he's going to rebuild the list. Now, he can only... Last time Hawthorne went to the draft table, Jason Dunstall had hair. So Sam Mitchell is literally <laughs> looking at us right now going, yep. this is where we're going and this is what we're doing. You look at their, their draft set up towards Clark, Clarkson's era. Clarko arrived... 
at the end of 04 and his first coaching year was 05. Now Luke Hodge was our first pick in 2001. Guess how we got that pick? We traded out Trent Crowe. Two years later we got him back and he was a centre half back in our 2008 Premiership team. So they set up from a long way out with Gary Bacanara and Chris Pelkin. But I think Hawthorne are going to do exactly the same thing right now. So Gunson's on the table. To be honest, everyone's on the table. But as we look at it now, you've got Tom Mitchell, got a great ball magnet, ball winner. Melbourne's just got uh, Luke Dunstan as a backup to that very problem. So these guys are out there, but Hawthorne are not going to shop. They don't do. They don't shop. You've got to come into the shop, open the door and actually ask politely what's on the table. So if you're going to shop, you need money, and no football club out there has got salary cap money. How um, strongly are they considering paying two-thirds of or half of some salaries for some really significant players? Well, they've got some room. So room means I'm prepared to negotiate and pay some... Um you know, pay the price. Yeah. I'll say pay the price because if you want to get to the draft table and you want to get the picks you want, you're prepared to pay the price because, you know, they're not going to exceed the salary cap, but they've got room to move uh, to obviously uh, accommodate for a lot of clubs. So Brisbane are desperate to get uh, a senior player in, but they just haven't got the salary cap room. So, so what would Jack Gunston be on, who makes so much sense at Brisbane, given that they're saying, well, we've probably got 150 grand of cap space. How, how does Jack Gunston get to Brisbane? Well, Hawthorne would front up 200 and... Uh, <laughs> To be honest, uh, Brisbane would front up the rest. Yep. So I think in terms of Jack Gunston, where he's at right now, uh, I'd love to see him go to Brisbane. And I say that as a Hawthorne person because he could go up there and help them with their success and he could play a pivotal role to Joe Danaher. And it'd be great to see the number 19 finally get to Brisbane. I had my opportunity in 01 and left my phone off, John during the trade period. <laughs> Lee Matthews said uh, we, need a, we need a small forward and then they did the trade. Clarkson, uh, Keating to Hawthorne for, and I was obviously off to Brisbane. Didn't answer my phone and, and missed two flags after that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, you're sitting well with that, aren't you? I'm uh, sitting extremely well. Yeah. <laughs> Retired in 07, they won it in 08. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Frio are really keen now and really optimistic they'll get that Adam Chera deal done. So they, we spoke about a deal last night where pick six and a future second rounder um, goes, but Frio gets a third, uh, uh, gives their third rounder back to the Dogs. So the Dogs are about to do a deal right now for Gold Coast Will Brody. They would also get the Suns pick 19. They give a second round, or sorry, a future pick uh, back next year. It opens up the options for Jordan Clark, maybe for the Adam Chera deal to have uh, 6 and 19. All of a sudden they've got Arsenal there. So let's talk about the Blues. They nail Chera, they nail uh, Dawson, um, they nail um, George Hewitt, yep. rather. Yep. Yep. How good's that midfield? Where do you rate it in the pecking order? 1 to 18. I like their midfield. The evidence in front of us, Ralphie, is they aren't that good just yet. Yep. You look at those names on paper and it's extremely risky. They have a lot of really good plays that should simply be better than what they are right now. You add in Hewitt, that gives them a little bit of balance around that midfield, someone that's prepared to run defensively, shut down a player. You add in young Chera, who's going to be a star for the next 10 years. It's really juicy. It looks fantastic. You've just got to do it, unfortunately. That's the only bit that they haven't done this list. The, be the best teams have eight to ten players roll through their midfield. Carlton don't have that as yet to be top end, so they sit still probably middle of the rung in terms of their midfield group. It's an indictment that they've had to really go and get George Hewitt for four years at 450, that they can't develop a yeah. player who's going to be defensively minded and yeah. run both ways and tag as well. That's a good point. What about you? I think they're going to be enormous next year, Carlton. I really do. B really bullish about the way their midfield looks. Uh, their forward line, I'd love to coach that forward line. I would pay anything to do that. Michael Voss, if you're watching. Um, but I think they're exciting times. and. I you can overload your midfield, but they're all quality players that are on the up, and 90% of those have got so much room to improve. Mm. As we take a break, Jono, you've just bought a tally, you've got the 4K. <laughs> I have. You've never seen it clear. Ultra HD. Years. When you retired, you've had that tally for that long, haven't you? So you've got a new tally, you're ready to go. The Turkish Grand Prix starts this weekend, and F1 time, Jono, who's the Hamilton? Yep. Hamilton v Lewis, Stappen. two points in it, but look out for Dan Ricciardo. He's on a bit of a fly this last <laughs> month. Well, it's going to be an absolute beauty, so tune in to that on Fox Sports. Two drivers that aren't exactly best of friends. It's Will to Will, Hamilton to Verstappen, Verstappen, and Hamilton have crashed out. That's what you get when you don't leave the space. the players but we should mention the families who ride every bump of the roller coaster that is a, a young man's football journey uh, right around Australia right now or right on the edge of this. Well they, they are. With pick two the Adelaide Crows have selected Riley Philthorpe from West Adelaide. <laughs> We've got 
mauled on the couch there a moment ago. The family went crazy. With pick 17, Oliver Henry from the Geelong Falcons. With pick nine, the Essendon Football Club have selected Archie Perkins from the Sandringham Dragons. A wonderful smile there and a tear in the eye. The Western Bulldogs have matched the Adelaide Crows bid for Jamara Ugelhagen from the Oakley Chargers. What a moment. What a special, beautiful moment. Oh, it is. Look, those, those pictures are, are just absolutely brilliant, are they? The emotion, it gets to work very shortly, but, but what a moment for the family. The NAB AFL draft starts on the 24th of November. Every young man's dream and their path to prime time. And one man who's going to be front and centre to that is Sam Darcy, Johnny Ralph. That's right. The father-son for the Western Bulldogs, I understand he Well, I expect he'll be the number three selection. So a 205 centimetre ruckman who can go back, who can play forward as well. He can do it all. But he's really raw. So, Jono, Tim English potentially needs to step up for the next couple of years until he blossoms. Do you believe in Tim English after a pretty quiet season? David King didn't love his grand final. He said the dogs should put him on the trade table. How do they not rejuvenate him? How do they really spark him into the player he can be? Yeah, well, he's got some strong at attributes, no doubt, as uh, as Timmy English. So has this young man on screen with some of the highlights, <laughs> yeah. you know, making us all smile at the, at, at the moment. Look, you can see that combination in the future of Eugle Hagen, Norton, and and potentially um, Sam Darcy as well. Look, Sam Sam's been fanatical for about six years now in terms of he's done sprint training for, for six years straight. He's worked extremely hard on his core strength. So he's not overly big, yet he's got unbelievable strength for a young guy. So there's those attributes that he that he brings in. The only thing that he hasn't done, he's played much footy the last two years, which is a lot of uh, lot of, which is the case for a lot of Victorian teenagers coming through at the moment. But can play centre half back, can play forward as well. The ruck stuff is probably a work in progress. It took Luke probably about three or four years to, <laughs> to break over Scotty Wine. So, look, but he's got a competitive streak, which doesn't surprise me either with uh, the way that uh, that Luke used to play also. So, there's there's some great attributes that, that go with it, other than just being a good mark or 205. There's aspects of, his, of what he's done over the last period of time, being fanatical about his approach to wanting to be drafted, that might hold him in good stead leading into um, his first pre-season. And I still see plenty of growth in Tim English as well. No, I wouldn't move yeah. him on because you want to have multiple options. You want to have two guys that can play ruck and forward. And you just brought in this young man in Darcy. He needs time to grow as well. You can't expect him to take the one, number one mantle. We know Steph Martin hasn't got long left. So I think you keep him there and let him grow as well, being Tim English. See, Tim, it's Tim English marking for me because when he's committed to the marking contest, yep. he's either brings it to the ground in the right spot or he marks it himself. Or they chop the arms, he gets the free kick. When he's not committed and he gets nudged under, that's what looks terrible in terms of Tim's game. You can improve game. that area, so, though. Yes, and yep. that's, that's the aspect, I think, that needs to come. Forget the ruck stuff. Around the ground, he just needs to be down the line, competitive in the air, and make those contributions to the team. When the ball goes in high up forward, make that contribution in a really competitive nature. And whether he can bring it or not, well, that's the big question mark consistently. Yeah, and John Segler, as a two-year stopgap, would mm. be absolutely perfect because yeah. Steph Martin is 35 next year. We know his body's banged up. We know that Darcy won't be ready for a couple of years. And so if they can get that kind of player in, you know, they're clearly in the premiership mm. build and premiership window absolutely next year. Del, the Richmond window, are they looking at the window or are they drawing the curtains? They have no choice but to go again. And you look at their draft picks of what they've got coming in this year. We've spoken a lot about the Hawthorne Football Club and what is possibly up for offer. You mentioned you can go in there, knock on Sam Mitchell's door and say, can we please have one of your really good players? I'm thinking Tom Mitchell. I'm thinking O'Meara as well. You look at what the, the, the Tigers haven't been great at in years gone by, as successful as they have been. It's the stoppage work. It's the contested work. You've got two guys there that are a proven product that they love putting their nose over the football and they love giving it to people on the outside. I would not be angry or disappointed if I was a Tig supporter. They've got 100 odd thousand members to say, I get it, we're going for four premierships in six years. If that means we're not going to be great or competitive for 10 years, I can cop that. I can cop that. <laughs> Use one of those picks. Now, clearly, you want to push it out as far as you can. Go and get one of those proven plays that you know, even if you have to pay a little bit over, Dicko, to go one more time. Well, the question is, can John, being the Richmond supporter, can you cop that? A decade, 1983 to 2016. They were very, very bleak years. You know what? There's enough young kids coming through. There's enough uh, trade arsenal there. I'd love them to go and get a Tom Mitchell there. And I don't think they're going to fall off the cliff. If they were, I'd be a bit more cautionary about it. But uh, I love it. You threw an O'Meara there. That was... a. Uh... Bit of a sort of caught me by surprise in terms of throwing his name in that mix. I love him. I do that from a Tigers perspective. Yep. I love him at the Hawks already and what he's also done at the Gold Coast Suns. So I'm just thinking, what will make them different? What will be that point of difference like we touched on before for the Cats? 
that could be their piece, their piece to get one more out of it. Well, you mentioned that then. The Cats, they've done that for 10 years, been mm. up there. So why would Richmond go off the cliff now? They've got a great opportunity. Amira, I get love. Get some of those injured boys back. Mitchell, I love. Um, yeah, allowed Dusty Martin to play 80, 20 forward mid. Not forgetting what Bolton did in the midfield. This exactly. Year and how, how good he was with his speed and spark. Oh, he was unbelievable. Yeah. That's all we've got time for, boys. Thank you very much to the A team, John Ralph, Nick Del Sano <laughs> and Brad Johnson. I think you know where this is going. So the B team will be back tomorrow, <laughs> headed by, uh, of course, Tom Morris and the crew. But you've been watching Training Day. We've got one week to go. Tomorrow we pick it all up again from 5pm.